Summer's almost here, at least where I live, and that means hot, muggy weather is right around the corner. So I thought we should explore a classic cool-me-down beverage that's clean, crisp, and thirst-quenching. Along with a good stiff shot of history, ha <laughs> yeah. Cobwebs festooned the ceiling. The mirror was encrusted with long, defunct flies. Dust and dirt toned all the pictures. The works of art at Shoemakers, I am sorry to say, often border on the risque. To clean the place up would be to kill its prestige and dissipate its patronage. What is the psychology of this success? Simply this, man likes to play at make-believe. Also, we like a change. The men who come here mostly live in palaces. They are rich and powerful. They bear big burdens. Here they relax and are free from the vigils of butler, wife, daughter, or decent neighbors. These are the words of American writer Albert Hubbard from his book called A Little Journey to Shoemakers. Yeah, shoemakers. <laughs> Simply put, it was a dive bar, but was well known for the quality of both its whiskey and wine. It was one building up from the National Theater in Washington, D.C., and the birthplace of the Ricky. As one of the better known uh, Washington Rum Row Saloons, Shoes, or Cobweb Hall as it was fondly called by many, was owned by William Shoemaker and Robert Otto Herzog. They were both German immigrants that served as officers in the Union Army in the Civil War. They opened Shoemakers in 1858, though the saloon had been going strong there since before the Mexican-American War of 1846. Many politicians, lawmakers, military personnel, and journalists frequented shoemakers. One of the regulars there was Colonel Joseph Kyle Rickey. He was an influential Democratic lobbyist, first in Missouri politics and later in the U.S. Capitol. He successfully campaigned for President Grover Cleveland and was a Confederate Army veteran. He was a gambling man, that's for sure, <laughs> and was said to have lost a considerable amount of money betting on the outcome of elections with Republicans for drinks. But Colonel Joe may be best remembered for his role in the creation of the Ricky. It was a hot summer back in 1880. Yeah, I remember. No. <laughs> no, let me do that again. <laughs> yeah, that's how old I am. I was there. It was a hot summer back in 1880. That's when Joe Rickey conceived his signature drink after a long campaign season. It was the bartender, George A. Williamson, that prepared the drink to the Colonel's instructions, making the very first one with Shoemaker's own house label whiskey. That's right, the first one was actually a rye Rickey. Other sources suggest it was strictly the creation of the bartender, George Williamson, after having a conversation with a patron about uh, how drinks were prepared in the Caribbean with limes and asked George to substitute rye whiskey for the rum. The following morning, Williamson was said to have made one for Colonel Ricky, who approved. <laughs> who knows? They probably both had a hand in inventing the Ricky. What we do know is Colonel Joe loved his Rickies and he loved drinking them at Shoemakers. So much so that he purchased that seedy little drinking hole and went on to become a major importer of limes into the U.S. But that was short-lived, as he died by suicide, drinking carbolic acid in 1903. He was 61. Maybe he mistook the acid for a Ricky. Hmm. Maybe, just maybe someone spiked his Ricky with a Mickey. <laughs> no, 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 no. The coroner confirmed it was suicide. As for the bar, it had a good run for nearly 60 years, but it's long gone too, though the Ricky lives on. You know, it didn't take long before the Ricky took off. That's when people started customizing the drink to their liking, with gin becoming the favorite uh, base spirit. The Ricky made its first appearance in Harry Johnson's 1882 Bartender's Manual. 
Harry called for a medium-sized fizz glass to be used with one or two pieces of ice. Squeeze the juice of one good-sized lime or two small ones. One wine glass of Tom or Holland gin if required. Fill up glass with club soda, carbonic or seltzers if required. And serve with a spoon. Since its creation, there have been countless riffs and spin-offs on the Ricky. It's even been declared the official native cocktail of Washington, D.C., with the month of July being Ricky Month. One thing I want to mention, though, many confuse the Ricky and the Collins. Just to remind you, a Ricky is made with lime juice and a Collins with lemon juice. And what really sets the Ricky apart from other citrusy highballs like the Collins is the lack of sugar. Also, a Ricky is usually served in a shorter glass than a Collins, but you know, does that really matter? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Let's make one. We're gonna start with some limes here. Um, I've got a nice little one here. I don't know, lately the limes are like, seem to be really, really small. Um, I don't know why that is, but let's hope we get some juice out of this. What we want is a half an ounce. And it's probably gonna take this whole lime because they are so small. Actually, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, and some gin. I'm gonna make a gin, Ricky, here. I've got the Bombay Sapphire. It's a lovely little gin. Um, juniper forward. Um, yeah, it's gonna make a nice little cocktail. Two ounces, okay. Now, the only other ingredient is um, some kind of seltzer, some kind of soda, right? Um, I picked up a few, I'm gonna move this. And we've got uh, San Benedito. <laughs> we got the Montelier. Montelier. <laughs> and uh, Perrier, of course. I thought I'd taste them to see which one because I have tried it with club soda. And mineral water just makes a better drink, I think, personally. So anyway, yeah, uh, let's try this one here. Whoa, yeah, see the fizz? Neat. All right, let's just try this. Oh, nice fizz, nice little fizz going on there. It's nice. San Benedito. Doesn't seem quite as fizzy. Hmm. Ooh. A lot more flavor in this. Mm hmm. And of course, Perrier. Oh, it's way in the back. I'll just use a bigger one. Lots of nice fizz there. That's nice too, hang on. This was the Mont Montelier, Montelier. Montelier, Montelier, you see potato, I see potato. Ooh, now I'm liking this one better. Perrier is classic for sure. Uh, they're all delish. They probably just came out of a tap anyway. So <laughs> you decide. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is, I think sparkling mineral water makes a better Ricky than with soda. Just saying. But that's my personal choice and my personal preference. You decide. Okay. Back to the Ricky. <laughs> A little sidetrack there, eh? Okay, let's ice this thing up here. We've got one nice big cube here. And some smaller ones. That's perfect. And which uh, sparkling water do we use? You know, I'm, 
actually liking the Perrier better. It seems to have a little bit more body to it. Uh, Perrier, just fill up your glass. And uh, we're gonna garnish with some fresh lime, of course. Give this a gentle stir. And drop in a couple little limes. Yeah, something like that. Done. How easy is that? Nice. Nice. Look at that. Okay. Uh, why don't we make uh, one with uh, rye whiskey and then compare those? Okay, we need some more lime. <laughs> yeah, we do. Okay, give me one second here. And we want the same amount. Uh, we want a half an ounce, okay? Or uh, that's uh, 15 mil, right? Looking good. Okay, next is the whiskey. I've got a, uh, a straight rye whiskey here, uh, Rittenhouse out of uh, Kentucky. And um, it's 100 proof or uh, 50 ABV. And we want uh, two ounces again. Uh, we're going to top it up with some ice, one big cube, some little cubes. That's looking good. And I guess we'll use Perrier again. It's my favorite. No, <laughs> no it isn't. But actually in the taste test, I liked it better. I did. Top her up. What are we looking at? About... Uh, about three ounces, three or four ounces of uh, sparkling uh, mineral water. Give it a gentle stir. Pop in our limes. And a little stick, a little stir stick there too. Nice. Okay, I guess we should test these things. Which one first? Well, gin first, yeah. Refreshing, dry, crisp. It's very clean. Okay, the original. <laughs> the original. Wow, that's really good too. Jeez, I've never had one. I've never made one before. Made countless uh, gin rickies, but That's pretty damn good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but then again, I am a, um, I'm a whiskey drinker. And yeah, I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. With zero sugar, the Ricky is a tart, dry drink that is surprisingly balanced and is invigorating on a hot day. Joe Ricky was onto something here, I think. <laughs> he was actually, as it turns out, something of an amateur biochemist with a theory that any drink with sugar in it heats the blood. Personally, I think the soda dilutes the acidity just enough so that the drink isn't sour. Now you could use a London Dry, and that's always a good choice when making a lime rookie. Well, if you use a, like a citrusy or a floral gin, they'll add their own nuance to this drink. All I can say is it's a killer refresher, let me tell you. Yeah, cheers. And the only other ingredient is going to be um, soda or um, some kind of sparkling wine. Wine? <laughs> oh, you know where my brain is. Okay, sorry. <laughs>
You got some splaining to do, Ricky. Yeah, you got splaining to do. Why you haven't hit that subscribe button or check these other videos out, you know? All I'm gonna say is this Ricky, Ricky, this Ricky <laughs> is really, really, what's another R word? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect.